Today, I want to show you how to use Color Grade Prompter, a plugin that allows you to grade footage based on different prompts. So how does it work? We have our footage layer here, and for the sake of demonstration, I will add the plugin to an adjustment layer. I add an adjustment layer and add the Color Grade Prompter effect. Now we have added the effect, and the most important section right now is the prompt section. This is where you can apply the different prompts to your footage. Then you can choose between two different models. I will come back to this later. Then there are settings about how to deal with the highlights of the clip, the back end, and performance section, and the settings related to LUT export. Let's get started with the different prompt types. You can add three different prompts to your clip, and I will show you the two different types now. You have either a text prompt or an image prompt. To apply a text prompt, click Add Text Input, which will create a mask down here. We will use this mask name to input the text. So now I go up here, select the mask name, and once I click it, the grading is applied. The first time it is applied, it takes a few seconds because the plugin needs to be initialized. But after that, the grading experience is much more responsive. Let's try some different prompts here. For example, Golden Sunset. This looks nice, or Red City. This is cool as well. Blue Hour is a bit dark, but it clearly matches the prompt. Let's try something else. Autumn. This is looking cool as well. In general, this can be a bit of trial and error, because internally the text is transformed into a color palette, and this color palette is then applied to the footage. You might have to try different variations. But in general, it's super responsive, and you can really get creative here. Now I want to explain the model. There are two different models and sometimes it's not easily predictable which model will give a better result. This is the base model. I switch over to the advanced model. As you can see, the result is different. The trees are more red and the overall colors are shifted a bit. Usually what you want to do is try both models and see which gives you a better result. Now, the other type is the image prompt, which allows you to select a reference image and take the grading from this image. I have prepared this image here, which I think has a nice grading, and I will hide it here. So we see our footage, and now, in a plugin, I have set this to image, and now I select the reference image layer, and we have transferred the grade from the reference image to our target image. Again here, you can try the different models, but I think in this case, the advanced model gives better results because the color of the tree is preserved better. As you can see, you have three fields to input the prompts here. The super cool thing is that you can mix different prompts, and you can even mix image-based and text-based prompts. Let's do another example. Let's go back to this autumn text layer here. In the second field, we add another text input. Clicking this added a second mask, and I select a mask here. What you see now, since they're both set to 100%, they both influence the final grade by the same amount. I can now play with the values here. For example, if I set this to zero, we will get only the Barbie World grade. And if I set this to 100 and this to 0, we only get the autumn. But we can blend between the different values here. As you can see, it's very interactive. So this is the grade that I want to settle for. Now I could also choose the image prompt, and again select the image reloaded earlier, and it will blend between the image we have loaded and the text above. So you can even blend between different prompt types. And now, since those parameters can be keyframed, we can do cool transitions. Let's here on the first frame set the text prompt to 100% and the image prompt to 0%. And we go to this frame and now we set this to 0 and this to 100. And if we step through the footage, we can see that we blend from one grade to the other. And this can be used to smoothly interpolate different grades. The next thing I want to show you is the pin highlight setting. It was deactivated for now. And we can stay here on this frame. I think it looks nice. And what happens if I click it? Actually, not much. Maybe you can see the very subtle, brighter parts of the image. They are not affected by the grading, and the effect is a bit like the effect of the pin highlights. It's not so strong here. But if I decrease this to, let's say, four or even one, maybe two, yeah, you can see that the brighter parts of the image are not affected by the grade. And this is desirable to keep highlights to be actually the brightest part of the image. Then finally, we have this overall strength slider, and what this does is it blends between the footage without any grade applied and the final grade that you define by setting your prompts. So if I set this to zero, we see the footage as it is, and I can increase the value here. And again, you see that this is super responsive. Another super cool feature is the ability to export a LUT. 
The LUT that you export will always store the grade that you're seeing on the current frame. So if you're using keyframe strength to blend between different prompts, the exported LUT, of course, will not contain the keyframes, but it will contain the exact look you're seeing on a frame. Let's say we want to export this frame to a LUT. Now I just click Export LUT, and it will tell me the location the LUT was saved to. And I can also reveal it by clicking Open LUT Folder, and this will bring up the folder where the LUT is stored, and you can recognize the LUT by the name. The name will always contain either the text prompts used and their rates, or the image prompts and their rates. So in this case, because we had a text with 100%, we know this is the LUT that we exported. And now, instead of using the effect, we can add the Lumetri color and select the LUT file that we just exported. And as you see, the colors are exactly as they were when we were using the effect. And the nice thing is, now this LUT file can be sent to other people who don't have the color grade prompter effect. You can even use it on different hosts, like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, basically every grading solution that is able to load LUT files. And it is also super fast to process. I want to show you another thing. Let's say I'm super satisfied with the look of the grading here, but I don't like that the trees turned out that red. So what I can do, I can apply a secondary filter to only selectively run the grading on the parts that are not selected by the secondary filter. Let me show you how to do it. I duplicate the original footage and put it on top of the adjustment layer and I apply a linear color key and select one of the trees here. Be careful that you really pick a green part of the image and then you also change this to matte, only so we will get a matte of the colors that we selected. And now like the black parts are the ones that we keep out. And now comes the important part. I hide this layer and down the adjustment layer. I set the above layer as track matte and I have to switch it to Luma. And now it's using the black and white color of this layer to only apply the grade to the parts of the image which are not selected by the secondary color key. And as you can see now, the trees stay the same color, but, and the other parts of the image, our grading is applied and we can even play with the softness here to make the transitions a bit smoother. But yeah, this is an easy way to selectively exclude parts of the footage from grading. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you have further questions, reach out to us via our website or join our Discord server.